What's up guys, Amog is back in the game, so welcome back to Vampire. Right, we finally have our own room, and it's pretty nice as well, so now we can analyze the blood sample, which we will do right away. Blood sample, analyze to view blueprints, alright. Light regeneration serum. So that was it. Oh, and yeah, I finally. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The Indeed. sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I have so much time now. Indeed. And I finally managed to change weapons. You don't do this in your normal inventory, you do it here. And then you can switch between the weapons as well. So, alright, now we have to sleep. Um, I want to talk to more people before we do anything else. Like, and I want to look around here. I will cut out anything that's not relevant or interesting. Dr. Tibbetts, Dr. Strickland, Dr. Aykroyd. All right. It's locked. But I'm pretty sure that there will be some interesting stuff around here. A used hacksaw. All right. So let's go downstairs and talk to some people. How about that? Oh, what's that? Gotta loot everything, as always. This is one big loot and grind thing of me, I don't know why. Good evening, you? nurse. Good evening, Doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton Hooks. Yes, Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins. But are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey, I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke. But we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. 
Good to know. Alright, we need more hints Goodbye, for the other Hawkins. things, for the other questions. But yeah. Come on, can you? Nurses are needed now. Yeah, I think so. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Cause you are. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like? To be a vampire. I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Indeed. I do think that. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Local investigations. A new citizen investigation is available. Ah, that is displayed here, categorized by district. You can start a new citizen quest by tracking it. Then access to a map and locate the area to explore. Find out who's spying on Thelma. Alright. That is cool. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Of course. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark. To your nocturnal <laughs> activities. Mistress of the Dark. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. 
I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Right. Personal questions? Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. How close are you to Miss Horcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. My arm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain, it's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the real one. Understandable, to be honest. Goodbye for now. Right, but it's really interesting to to listen to all those characters. I'm really sorry if it's a little bit slow for you right now, but I really enjoy this. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion make me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. 
And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. Hmm. So there is someone. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers' trade union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know? The sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint. Not even criminals. That's at least good to know. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. And I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really. But I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke? Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. Alright, that was Goodbye, it. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. It's really cool and interesting. So that's her. Have we spoken already? Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good yep. evening, Dr. Reed. We did. Do we have any new stuff? No? Goodbye, right, Nurse then. Hawkins. Can I talk to you? Nope. Okay then. <laughs> Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. Such an honor. Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Please, could you tell me something? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. Well, but you need to do something. What can you tell me? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea, but with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. 
It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. I think so. Do you need help with any- Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Next quest? Great! Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior, a man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Right. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Right, all right, all right. So, we want to talk to this Good evening, other sir. dude now. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swanson's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. What? Prick. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital, instead of a burden. Since your tenure... Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become... displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Tell me, Waverley. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. 
Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. I don't know what to say. If you are going to lead this surgery, I'm trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. Are you sure? I don't know about this. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Knowledge has always been and will remain our main weapon, and it has always come at a price. And personal initiative. It is not a question of initiative, it is a question of integrity. These men and women have put their faith in us, Dr. Reed. It seems you have bad memory. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Aykroyd. At last. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Well, or maybe not, because I really don't like you. Holy shit, how many people are here? This will take a while to talk to all of them. What can I do for you, Doctor? Alright, we've you, spoken already. How can we be sure we're making a difference? Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Tell me about it. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work, and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doc- Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagree about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Are you satisfied? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Unfortunately, we can't do that right now. As much as I would love to help this dude. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. 
How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. I understand that. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Yep. That would have been really, really awful. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Oh, sweet girl. Will this shift never end? Greet me like a book. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. All right, that was interesting. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Right, so, what about you? Don't waste it. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. How painful. So painful, I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. That is not helpful. How painful. So painful. Tell me about it. I don't want to talk, Doctor. How so painful. I'll let you get some. Good evening, sir. All right, what do you have to say? Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? What can you tell? Not much to say. Just take care of my mother. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes. Thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. 
What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. I think so. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. Oh boy. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. And it won't be in this one. Believe me. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. We have more to Good say evening, now. Mr. I'm okay. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured, you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Well, that's kind of interesting. They, they, have they to go. seem to have a strange... Doctor. Um... Well, they don't like the each other that much, right? Good At evening, Miss Seems like good this. evening, Doctor Reed. So, which nurse was it? I forgot. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. God damn it! Wasn't it the other one? You were right. What can I do for you, Doctor? Nope. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Which one was it? As for me, what a blundering idiot. Who the hell are you? Good evening, Dr. Strickland. Oh. And good evening to you. Alright. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Hold on, I wanted to talk to her. Where is she? Right, that's our little vampire girl. Was it you? Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doc. I don't think so. Goodbye, Nurse. Call me if. Come on. Good evening, Good evening, Doc. Why do you have such a mediocre reputation among your colleagues, Milton? Fuck them. Nobody knows the horrors I've seen since working here. This city was sick long before the epidemic, Dr. Reed. I know it's a difficult task, but correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the job you are paid to do? I've seen babies left to die while their brothers were properly fed. Underage girls and boys sold to all manner of perverts. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. We lack words. So excuse me if I don't look on the bright side of life. Goodbye, Milton. Goodbye, Milton. So where's this other... Where's the nurse that 
Had her pay for the fucking bed. I mean, that is ridiculous. It's not you, right? Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good oh, evening. It's the same one again? Goodbye, Nurse. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Doctor. It was her, wasn't it? Oh, a lot of hints are required for that. All right. Goodbye. God damn it! Gotta find her. The daily routine. What can I do for you? Thank you. No Nothing for now. Thanks. Come on, this is a fucking joke. Thelma Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? We will take I care of that in a second. God damn it. I really don't know. Good evening. Good evening. Goodbye, Nas. All right. Well, I have to talk to them again. I've I seriously kind of forgot. How long must I wait, damn it? Blaming me will not further your agenda. Damn it! How long should I wait? I mean, yeah, I get that he's pissed, all right? When you're feeling better. It's locked. It's locked. Damn. The pain. Hold on, where was that? Why do I have such a bad sense of orientation? It's ridiculous. Seriously. Gotta be somewhere here. No, but it's not. What the hell? Now it's open. The fuck. Good evening, Doctor. Tell me the ambulance truck. What do you mean? She managed to secure. She charged. Yes, and I. Tell me more about your. The ambulance driver was quite. What do you mean? She managed to secure. A... All right. Yeah, we don't know which one it was. Okay, so that's goodbye, Mrs. Great. But okay, I think we've talked to everyone for I'm now. Right. Come on, can you time with me. go where I want you to go, dude? I'm not doing anything. What the hell? Come Good on. Evening, sir. All right. Anyway, we have quests to do. Missing ingredient. Yeah, gotta do that. But f before we do this, we won't find out who's spying on her. Yeah. 
We're going to do that next. Hold on, it is here already. How am I supposed to find out who's spying on her? Alright, let's let's see if we can figure this out. I'm out of stamina. How fucking great is that? Actually, I did not want to shoot him. Wanted to stun him. Determine what the Proven Agents have discovered. Vampire activity. Three days ago, one of, one of our new recruits heard a rumor about the presence of a female vampire hiding in the Pembroke Hospital. All we have is her first name, Thelma. You're missing. Your mission is to discreetly go there and observe any suspicious activity concerning said leech. Then report directly back to us and we will decide what action should be taken. Alright. Find the local compound, go... Po... Right, where do I have to go there? Oh shit! That's pretty far away. But yeah, let's do this. I have no idea what to do with all the stuff that I'm finding all the time, to be honest. But I'm really sure that we will find something to do with them. Enter at your own risk, alright. Whitechapel Street! I hear enemies. How the fuck did that happen? I thought I had full health. Hold on, seriously, I thought I had full health. How did he kill me instantly? That shit is ridiculous. He's really, really strong. I'm out of stamina and he one hits me. It's holy shit. All right, I will not go there. The blood of citizens is the fastest way to evolve. Should consider that, I think. All right then. Yep. Let's just go straight ahead. District state is serious, all right. That's interesting. It's a leech. It's not. And don't say that word. Come on. Hold on, dude. Holy shit. Why am I so... Why am I so fucking weak? It's ridiculous. Do we have someone with full blood quality? Thelma is almost... Well, yeah, we should probably 
complete her quest and after that I guess we can do this yeah you fucker I'm not fighting you I'm definitely not stupid enough for that Where are we here? Is that something that we can use as hideout? I don't know. Oh no, hold on. Is this the place we've been in already? It might be. I'm pretty pissed about the fact that I cannot silently go to someone to get him down. Come on, dude. I'm out of stamina already. That works really, really quick. Why is that a fucking problem? Do I have something to heal with me? This is annoying. I only fought one dickhead and I'm almost dead. It's ridiculous. It really is. I have a lot of junk with me. Fucking great. I don't have anything here. Oh. Holy shit. That shit was intense. I don't get too close to him. Lonely and badly for us. Oh, what? Where am I? Abandoned investment property. All right, then. Is that where I'm supposed to be? Be citizen to save. Careful, the dangerous citizen may not survive the next night. Go check on him. I cannot enter. Oh. Come on, I won't survive the fucking night. This is pissing me off. Get away from me! Touch me with your disgusting hands! Let's see if we can get him down now, finally. Huh, we made it. I can't believe it. Holy shit, hey. What? What happened? Who are you? It's all right, sir. You're safe now. Oh, a fellow Englishman. Thank you, sir. For a moment I thought those bloody heathens had kill me. What are you doing here? This place is not safe. Yeah, it's a cesspool, but it's mine. I came to collect some overdue rent, but those who still live here have gone completely bonkers. You're very lucky to be alive. Yeah, filthy immigrants, fucking savages, every one of them. And now with this bloody fever, they're just animals. You can find safety of sorts in Whitechapel. If you're quick and cautious, you'll be able to avoid the... savages. 
Citizen rescued. You will return to the dis his district the following night. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. Great. All right. This is Braille. Unreadable text. I need text. someone who can read this. All right. That's interesting. Okay, so how do I get out again without getting killed? That would be really nice. Yeah, I really don't want to go up again to those. Well, my, my life is almost full again. Oh yeah, it's only him left. That is pretty cool. I fucking made it! Holy shit, this took for fucking ever! That was so not worth 50 minutes of my fucking time, and yes, it cost me... I think even more than 15 minutes. <laughs> to be honest. Alright then. Well, I saw something over here. Alright, no, it was nothing. Oh yeah, it was some. Great. So now we can go back outside. Door has been unlocked. Ah, alright, that's the head one. Good to know. There are more rats. Cool. I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, but you do. Cool, so now I will head back without doing anything else. We're not strong enough for this shit right now. I get it, okay? <laughs> so where did I come Turn from? Around, sir. Hey! I'm talking to you! I came from here. There's one of them. Oh, come on, fuck off, dude. I'm burning. Well, not anymore. All right. Holy fucking shit. This is really intense. Oh. Fucking great. All right, I will now go to my office. Right, I will not sleep because I think the story will continue if I do so. <laughs> Which means I will end this episode right here. I really hope that you enjoyed it. It was quite of a pain in the ass for me in the end. Because I wasn't aware that I'm so weak compared to the first uh, area that we can access. So I have to think about what to do next. We should probably level up somehow. But yeah, let's, let's see this in the next episode. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button down below. Leave me a comment and then... I will see you again in the next episode of Vampire.